We're going to be discussing the chemistry of permanent waves this morning. And in discussing them, we're going to decide which works best with what type of hair, which works best for the type of curl a client wants, um, which is the most damaging, which is the most gentle, which takes the longest time, all that good stuff. Because that's the things we have to take into consideration as we do perms for clients. So in order to understand what perms do to the hair, we've got to first understand what are the perms made of. Alkaline permanent waving solution softens and swells the hair, which raises the cuticle and permits the solu solution to penetrate into the cortex. And we know from our discussion earlier that the bonds are in the cortex that we're going to be breaking. And we know already that the um, cuticle scales or cuticle imbrications are simply a protective coating to protect our hair color and our bonds. We have an illustration in the book that shows how much the hair will swell in five minutes um, with alkaline waving solution as opposed to alkaline waving solution, but we're going to talk about that as we go. The reduction reaction in permanent waving is due to the addition of hydrogen. We know that we sometimes add hydrogen, and that's what we're doing here. Sometimes we add oxygen, and that's what we do in neutralization. In examining reduction reaction more closely, we see that a disulfide bond joins a sulfur atom on one polypeptide chain with a second sulfur atom on a neighboring polypeptide chain. Permanent waving solution breaks a disulfide bond by adding a hydrogen atom to each of the sulfur atoms in the disulfide bond. Sulfur atoms attach to the hydrogen from the permanent waving solution and break their attachment to each other. Once the disulfide bond is broken, the polypeptide chains are able to slip into their new curl position. And all we're talking about now is the hydrogen atoms coming in where we're attached here and allowing it to slip into its new form, which is now wrapped around that rod. So the bonds are slipped in their, into their new form. The reducing agents used in permanent waving solution are thiol compounds, commonly referred to simply as thio. Thioglycolic acid is the most common. It is a colorless liquid with a strong unpleasant odor. Thioglycolic acid provides the hydrogen that causes the reduction reaction in permanent waving solutions. I've got a couple of perms here to show you about some things. And some of them plainly come out and say they're alkaline perms, and that's what I'm going to show you now. When we go into acid, some of them will plainly say they're acid perms. And some of them don't really say if they're alkaline or acid. Let's see what information we got on here. And the most amazing thing to me always is it doesn't say what the pH is on a perm. I'd really like to see that. How strong is that chemical I'm putting on this hair? Would y'all like to see that? Mm -hmm. I think that manufacturers maybe should do that. But this is a uh, natural curl by Naturel. It tells us it is an alkaline perm. It tells us that it's regular form of formula for normal hair. And as we go around looking on the box, we see all kind of different stuff. What's in the box? Um, our directions kind of on the back or what it's for. It says use regular formula for normal hair. Use the tinted formula for color treated hair. Natural curl perms contain substantive protein for superior internal and external conditioning. They give a firm curl. They can be wrapped with lotion or with water. Now you don't want to go putting this lotion on there while you're doing the actual wrapping unless you're really fast because you've got to remember that chemical's going to stay on there the whole time. So we're using the water wrap method. It requires a test curl every two minutes. Do not use it on tinted hair. And then the most interesting thing I found or I find on the box is the ingredients are on the bottom of the box. So we can go back and see if they're listing any of these ingredients that we're talking about like thio or thioglycolic acid, or in a minute we're going to talk about ammonium theoglycolate. Our ingredients, and this is the waving lotion, it contains water, so there's more water in the waving lotion bottle than anything else. Then it contains ammonium thioglycolate. This one also contains sodium hydroxide. Now that's really astounding because ammonium theoglycolate, thioglycolate, and sodium hydroxide do not get along together. 
it also contains ammonium hydroxide and then the list goes on and it tells us then the neutralizer ingredients it's water again and then uh, hydrogen peroxide and we know that hydrogen peroxide is used often in oxidation y'all remember bacteriology and everything contains oxidation All right. quantum this is the firm option it's a buffered alkaline perm one application and then it goes on and tells us and its ingredients in the lotion, it contains water and then ammonium thioglycolate and then diammonium dithioglycolate. And the neutralizer again is water and then hydrogen peroxide. So they sound kind of alike, don't they? Band deter, a spa conditioning perm. Self heating is an alkaline formula. And again, we've got our ingredients on the bottom, and I'm not going to go over each one. But it gives you a lot of information there to research your perms on. The strength of the permanent waving solution is determined by the concentration of thio. Stronger perms have a higher concentration of thio with a greater number of hydrogen atoms. Meaning if it's strong, it's developed for resistant hair. So it has the power to get in through the cuticle scales and go in and add more hydrogen atoms in order to break more bonds. When more hydrogen atoms are available, more disulfide bonds are broken. Thioglycolic acid is an acid, and since acids themselves do not swell the hair or penetrate into the cortex, it is necessary for manufacturers to add an alkalizing agent. The addition of ammonia to thioglycolic acid produces a new chemical called ammonium thioglycolate, which is now alkaline, ATG. Our ammonium thioglycolate is the main, main active ingredient or reducing agent in alkaline perms. The degree of alkalinity is a second factor in the overall strength of the permanent waving solution. That's why I'd like to see the pH, wouldn't you? Then we'd know how strong. We got a number. Coarse hair with a strong resistant cuticle layer may need the additional swelling and penetration that is provided by a more alkaline permanent waving solution. By contrast, porous hair or hair with a damaged cuticle layer is easily penetrated and could be damaged if we use a highly alkaline permanent waving solution. The pH or alkalinity of the perm solution should correspond to the resistance, strength, and porosity of the cuticle layer. So we want to talk about our types of permanent waves. We're a little bit familiar with alkaline now because we've already talked about them. They're called cold waves, and they're called cold waves because we apply to our client and just leave her sitting there at room temperature. It doesn't mean we have to put the air conditioner on or anything, but it doesn't require any type of added heat. And heat with permanent waving is just like with everything else. Heat speeds up the molecular movement of chemicals and causes more of a chemical reaction. So the first alkaline or cold waves were developed in 1941 and relied on the same ATG that is still used today. Since alkaline waves process at room temperature without the addition of heat, they become commonly known as cold waves. Most alkaline waves have a pH between 9.0 and 9.6. Then we had the true acid waves. I did not even have one of those in the back. To bring out here and show you. Why do you think that that would be the case? Why wouldn't I have true acid waves back there? They, work very well. they didn't work very well. As a matter of fact, I don't hardly know if you could find one today, and we're fixing to go over it and we'll know why. But I did find out something with my um, what we call the acid balance wave. They do contain glycerol monothioglycolate that we're going to talk about being the main ingredient in true acid waves. So the first true acid waves were introduced in the early 1970s. Most true acid waves have a pH between 4.5 and 7.0. They require heat to speed the processing. They also require heat to help open those cuticle imbrications because remember what an acid does to the cuticle scales? What does it do? It closes them. It closes them. So if we're putting an alkyl, uh, acid solution on there wanting to go into the disulfide bonds, 
and we're closing the cuticle scales, we're not going to get very far, are we? So we need the heat. Glycerol monothiol glycolate is the main active ingredient and is an acid with a low pH. Although a lower pH tends to cause less damage to the hair, acid waves process more slowly. They require the added heat of a hair dryer and they do not usually produce a firm curl as the, al as the alkaline waves did. Since acidic solutions contract the hair or close the cuticle scales down, you may be wondering how a true acid wave with a pH below 7 causes the hair to swell. The average pH of five hair is 5.0. So although a pH of 7 is neutral on the pH scale, a pH of 5 is neutral for hair. Since every step on the pH scale represents a tenfold change in pH, a pH of 7 is 100 times more alkaline than the pH of hair. Even pure water with a pH of 7 raises our cuticle scales and damages hair a little bit. But they didn't work well. Y'all write about that. They didn't work well. So manufacturers came out with what they called acid balanced waves. And I've got one or two here that comes right out and says acid balanced. Right here. Acclaim. It's an acid balanced perm. It's the extra body formula. And it tells us a lot on here about it. Resilient natural condition curls with long lasting body. We have the extra body formula here that is for normal hair, resistant hair, fine limp, even tinted and highlighted if there's not but 40% of the head tinted or highlighted. So if you've got a person that's put color all over their hair, you wouldn't want to put this perm on there. And again, we have the ingredients on the bottom of the box. In the waving lotion, we first have water. Then we have ammonium thioglycolate, laureth, and then ammonium chloride, ammonium hydroxide. And that's in the waving lotion part B. Waving lotion part A is glycerol thioglycolate, glycerin, and some other ingredients. The neutralizer is the same thing, water, hydrogen peroxide. So that's an acid balance. When I have another couple of acid ones, I'm not sure if they say acid balance, but I'm going to explain to you what acid balance means in just a minute. Jerry Redding's one and only simply says it's an acid perm, the one perm for natural looking curls on normal tinted or frosted hair. Then naturally we have our directions on it and we have our nothing on the bottom of the box for ingredients. And it doesn't tell us the ingredients on this box. It's interesting, isn't it? But at least we know it's acid. Then Matrix has Biolage. It's an acid wave. One application. And that's all it tells us there. But it gives us a little chart here to tell us the types of hair we might want to use it on and what type of curls we can expect with it. No, alkaline comes in color-treated formulas. Acids come in color-treated formulas. You've always got to look at your box and see what it tells us it can use. We can use it for. This one, um, says tinted that we can use it. But you want to read your directions carefully about that sort of stuff when you're talking about color-treated, because like the one while ago said. That only 40% of the hair on the head could have been color treated. So you want to read and make sure because I'm going to show you in a minute some perms for color treated hair that are simply for that. All right, let's go ahead and talk about these. Let's talk about acid balance first, what it means. And this is where manufacturers got us a lot. Have y'all noticed on TV a lot of the shampoos and I will say it's pH balanced? All right. What do you think pH balance means now that you've become introduced to the pH scale or have you thought about it? Hadn't really thought about it yet. All right. They know that as consumers we're kind of dumb about a lot of things. And that sounds kind of good. This shampoo is pH balance for our hair. Makes it sound like they've really done something wonderful for us, doesn't it? And naturally they tell us that's a wonderful shampoo. If we use it, we're going to have this 
glowing hair that we saw on the commercial. <laughs> pH balance means that if you bought it and it was an eight when you bought it and they manufactured it, whatever the shelf life, usually about three years, it will still be an eight. That's what pH balance means. Could have been 13, could have been three. It just means it's balanced somewhere on that scale. Kind of sucked us in that time, didn't they? Acid balanced, if that is put on something, means it's got to fall in the acid range that hair and skin and nails are in. So we know there's going to be no, you know, big time lifting with it. But we've got to remember, we're talking about permanent waves during this discussion. We're not talking about shampoos. So when we talk about acid balanced... We know that the true acid waves, which had a 4.5 or 7.0 pH, now have some additives to make them work better. Those didn't work well, so they had to come back and do something. Raising the pH scale was the first thing they done to make them work better. So in order to permit processing at room temperature and to produce a firmer curl, the strength and pH of acid waves have increased steadily over the years. Most of the acid waves found in today's salons have a pH between 7.8 and 8.2, which means they are not really acidic. Modern acid waves are not true acid waves, but are actually acid balance waves. Because of their higher pH, they now can process at room temperature and do not require the added heat of a hairdryer. Modern acid waves also process more quickly and produce former firmer curls than the true acid waves did. All acid waves are going to have three components. The permanent waving solution, the activator, and then the neutralizer. The activator tube contains GMTG, a glycerol monothioglycolate, which must be added to the permanent waving solution immediately before use. And when you add that to your waving solution and feel of your bottle, the bottle gets hot when the two chemicals are mixed. That's where your heat comes from. Although GMTG is the primary reducing agent in all modern acid waves, it may not be the only reducing agent contained in that product. Most of these waves also contain ATG, just like our coal waves did. Although the low pH of acid waves may seem ideal, repeated exposure to GMTG is known to cause allergic sensitivity in both hairstylists and clients. So we want to be real careful. We used to handle alkaline a lot with our hands, which we shouldn't have done. But certainly with these, we've got to have gloves on as we handle these products to protect ourselves because when we get dermatitis, it's very difficult to ever get rid of. And we work with our hands all day in some type of water or chemical. We've got a caution here with this, too, and it tells us accidentally mixing the contents of the activator tube with the neutralizer instead of mixing it with the permanent waving solution like we should have will cause a violent chemical reaction that can cause injury, especially to your eyes. So you want to be super careful. What I always do is leave my neutralizer in the box before I mix. Exothermic waves, and I have a couple of exothermic waves I want to show you all here too. And exothermic to me, again, sounds like that the heat source is from an external source, but it's not. We've got the little tube in here that we add to it. Vitawell tells us a little something about his exothermic wave. It says it's for firm, resilient curl. One formula for normal, resistant, fine lip, gray-white hair and for specialty wraps. This one doesn't say anything about color-treated hair, does it? So we're not going to use this on somebody that's got color. We have our directions again on the back, and this time we've got our ingredients. The thermal additive is disodium phosphate and hydrogen peroxide. Interesting. Our waving lotion is ammonia, ammonium thioglycolate, and then goes on to fragrance. Our neutralizer is cocoa betaine and dimethicon. And then we go on to hydrogen peroxide, a lot less hydrogen peroxide in it. And you know, I didn't even see water in these. It's the last ingredient, so this contains less water. 
Another one we have, and this is a new one. I'm not familiar with it. I ordered it the other day. Image Maker. It says the Thermal Control Exothermic Perm. So we know again when we mix our chemicals, we're going to get heat. Image Maker Thermal Controlled Exothermic Perm helps you create strong, resilient, true to rod size curls on normal, tinted, fine, length, or resistant hair. Gentle, regulating heat assures even processing, leaving hair in beautiful condition. It lists the ingredients in the activator would be water and hydrogen peroxide. Um, in the waving lotion is water, ammonium thioglycolate, quaternarium. In the neutralizer is water and hydrogen peroxide. We find out they have a lot in common, don't they? And the other one I've picked out is Redken, normal formula. And it tells us it's the conditioned curl. It tells us also that it's the exothermic wave. It's the normal formula for conditioned, firm, resilient curls on normal, fine, limp, and resistant hair. Again, it doesn't say anything about color. And we don't have the ingredients there either. But they are on the side. All right. So our exothermic waves produces heat. Exothermic waves create an exothermic chemical reaction that heats up the solution which speeds up the processing when we apply it. All exothermic waves have three components. The permanent waving solution, an activator, and the neutralizer. The permanent waving solution contains thiol just as the cold wave did. The activator contains an oxidizing agent which is usually hydrogen peroxide. You remember in the alkaline waves we were using hydrogen peroxide as a neutralizer to neutralize the alkalinity. Mixing an oxidizer with the permanent waving solution causes a rapid release of heat and an increase in the temperature of the solution. The increased temperature increases the rate of the chemical reaction and it shortens the processing time. That's another problem people had with the true acid waves. You had to put them under the dryer and they had to sit there from 35 to 45 minutes with that solution on them. And that was really miserable for your elderly clients. Then we have our endothermic waves. An endothermic chemical reaction is one that absorbs heat from its surroundings. Endo sounds like it would be internal to me, but again, and I'm calling your attention to this because I know a lot of students get them confused on the test. Endothermic waves are activated by an outside heat source, usually a hood-type hair dryer. Endothermic waves will not process properly at room temperature. Most true acid waves are endothermic and require the added heat of a hair dryer. So they're not very popular. You had not heard me say a thing on here about endothermic yet. On all of them, we've been through three, six, nine perms so far. But we still have a couple left over here, or three left, and we'll go over them in a minute. The next type of waves we have are the ammonium-free waves that use an ingredient that does not evaporate as readily as ammonia. So there is very little odor associated with their use. Amino methanopropanol, or AMP, and monoethylamine, or MEA, are examples of alkaline amines that are used in permanent waving solutions as substitute for the ammonia. Even though these solutions may not smell as strong as ammonia, they can still be every bit as alkaline and just as damaging. Ammonia-free does not necessarily mean damage-free. Let me tell you one way that you can tell, and y'all can start judging this by the smells you get out of the lab area. How can you tell if they're giving an alkaline wave or an acid wave? If they're given an al alkaline wave, the smell kind of burns your nose. It has that kind of ammonia smell. If it smells like they have broke a bunch of rotten eggs out there, then they're given an acid wave. Have y'all picked up on the different smells? Start trying to see if you can distinguish and then go out there and see what they gave, which one it was. It's really interesting that the smell would give it away. We also have our thiol-free waves that use an ingredient other than ATG as the primary reducing agent. The most common thiol-free waves rely on cystamine or mecatamine. Although these thiol substitutes are not technically ATG, they are still thiol compounds. Although thiol-free is often marketed as damage-free, that's not necessarily true. 
At a high concentration, the reducing agents in thiol-free waves can be just as damaging as thiol. Then we have our low pH waves. The use of sulfates, sulfites, and bisulfites presents an alternative to ATG known as low pH waves. Sulfites work at a low pH and have been used in perms for years, but they've never been popular. Permanents based on sulfites are very weak, do not provide a firm curl, especially on strong or resistant hair. Sulfite permanents are usually marketed as body waves or alternative waves. Now let me tell you what a true body wave is. A true body wave is simply a permanent wave rolled on larger rods, so you get nothing but body, no curl. What then is an alternative wave? An alternative wave is for the client that's got some occasion coming up, she'd like to have some curl, but she doesn't want a perm to stay with her right on and on. And that's what an alternative perm is. You'll see them now in the beauty supply house that says temporary perms. That sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? Temporary, permanent being permanent and temporary being temporary. But we have the temporary perms, and that's what the alternatives are. Is like the low pH. You put it in there and it doesn't totally allow as much slippage or anything, so you don't get as much curl. And in a few weeks, it washes out. It's gone. And you don't have as much chemical reaction to the hair as you did before, so you don't have the damage there. Now, before we go on into selecting the right type of perm, I want to show you all a couple more. And let's just see what they say. We've got modern form here. It says it's the perfect perm for today's styles. We have the tinted formula. That's what I've picked up. This is for tinted or very dry hair. So that answers another question for us. What type of perms do we use on somebody that's got dry hair or damaged hair? You know, that's not too damaged to perm, but that we don't want to add any more damage to. So this one tells us it'd be good for it. You know, or wouldn't hurt it. It's developed for it. It gives us a little description over here whether your client wants firm curl to support a full curly style or a wide wave pattern to add body and movement to the design. Choose modern form for hair that's easy to manage and style. We don't have any ingredients on the back. We don't have any on the side. They could be on inside the box. But we do have the um, directions right here on the back of the box and I like that a lot of them give you a sheet of paper and it's yay long with the littlest type on it you've ever seen and you know that nobody's going to read it and I also read this a little earlier and I like it and it tells you after we've finished rolling the perm when we get ready to put the processing solution on it we put some protective cotton around the edges so that it doesn't run in their eyes and it tells us make sure that we remove that cotton because it's saturating, saturated with the permanent waving solution. And the scary part here is we know that that waving solution is softening and swelling the hair. If it's strong enough to do that, what is it doing to the skin? It's doing the same thing, except we want the hair softened and swollen to open up the cuticle scale so we can go in. But if we do that to the skin, what's underneath the skin? Our vitals. So we get a chemical burn. So I'm giving you this caution up front. This is the first one I've seen this on this morning. Get that cotton off. If you didn't have a protective barrier such as a pre-cream underneath it, wet you a towel with cool water and blot. Don't rub because that skin is soft and it's swollen. So you're going to get damage. Blot it, put some clean towel. But whatever you do, don't leave that saturated towel there on your client's neck. Then we've got two here, OptiCurl and OptiColor. So that tells us right off, we've got one formula for regular hair and one formula for color treated hair, I know. Um, so we, we go right by the name with this. So if I send you back there and get one, you know, go get a perm for so and so, the client's got color treated hair. You haven't got to do a lot of reading. Opt to color. That tells us what it is. It says it's for all types of color treated hair. Then it gives us a chart here on the side that helps us to go by, you know, at a certain point, and I told my color group this the other day, so I'm going to tell y'all, there is no 
perm for hair that has been double processed. So this is for color treated, but if you've got double processed, your hair's already been through the two processes. It gives us the ingredients on the bottom, the directions, then the OptiCurl. Let's see what it says about it. It's a conditioning formula, one formula for normal resistant or color treated hair if it was treated with only 20 volume peroxide. And as you get into color, you'll understand a little more about that. It tells us it's an advanced formula that self-adjusts to differences in hair porosity, delivers springier, firmer curls for extra volume and support. It's easy to use. Just set your timer. Mm. So how do we select? It's extremely important to select the right type of perm for each client. I want to tell you a little story about when I first started working in the salon. We didn't have all these types of perm. Of course, there wasn't all these types on the market, you got to remember. I started working before true acid waves ever come on the scene, so I got to work through that little experience, I might say, and it was an experience. But I worked in a salon, and I've never liked this, and I always try to teach clients, or students, don't do this to your client. But I'm fixing to age myself when I tell you all this. Perms, clients paid $10, $12.50, or $15 for the perms. That's what they paid us to do them. What's perms now? 50 60 70 sometimes. But we only had two types of perm in our salon. Only the $15 one was in a box perm like this. The other one is what you call bulk perms or budget perms. So when a client come in, you ask her which perm she wanted to get. 10 12 50 or 15 It didn't matter if she chose 10 or 12 50 She's going to get the same thing anyhow. And I felt really bad about that thing. How can you feel good about giving a client something you charge twelve fifty for when you would have give her that anyway if she'd have said ten dollars. You understand what I'm saying? And that's kind of backroom ethics and it it's not a good thing. So I've always tried to keep plenty of perms here for y'all to use, different kinds to be able to select for that individual client. I tried to do that in my salon. You know, and there were a lot more than two types of perm on the market when I was at, first went into the salon. That's just a way of making money. And we did make more money off of those that chose 1250 We made more off of it. We was making money off the $10 one, you know, because you were talking about they were $0.50, $0.60 cent a piece then. Every client has hair with its own distinct texture and condition, so individual needs must be addressed. After a thorough consultation, you should be able to determine which type of perm is best suited to your client's hair type, condition, and desired results. The strength of any permanent wave is based on the concentration of its reducing agent. In turn, the amount of processing is determined by the strength of the permanent waving solution. If weak permanent waving solution is used on coarse hair, there may not be enough hydrogen atoms there in order to break the necessary number of disulfide bonds, no matter how long you leave it on. The same weak solution may be exactly right for fine hair that has fewer disulfide bonds. On the other hand, if we use that strong solution, which releases a lot more hydrogen atoms, it would be perfect for the coarse hair, but too damaging for the fine hair. The amount of processing should be determined by the strength of the solution, not necessarily how long the perm processes. Permanent waving, most of the processing takes place as soon as the solution penetrates the hair. That means it takes place within the first five to ten minutes. The additional processing time simply allows polypeptide chains to shift into their new configuration. Let's go back to page 501. We have a caution there. The ingredient strength and pH of permanent wave solutions vary from manufacturer to manufacturer. Might be considerably so. So make sure you check manufacturer's instructions and get your MSDS in order to keep up with the detailed information on it. We have our um, charts here I want to go over so we'll kind of be repeating what we've already said, but they give us an idea about each perm. If we have an acid 
excuse me, an alkaline cold wave with a pH of 9.0 to 9.6. The active ingredient is going to be ammonium thioglycolate. It processes at room temperature. It's really good for coarse, thick, or resistant hair. We can expect to get firm, strong curls. It will process quickly at room temperature. The disadvantage of it is it has an unpleasant ammonia odor, and it may damage delicate hair if that's what we've put it on. Our exothermic wave, and notice the pH, exothermic wave is 9.0 to 9.6 again. The active ingredient is ammonium thioglycolate. It is exothermic, meaning we've got to mix the two chemicals together. It's recommended for coarse, thick, or resistant hair. We can expect firm, strong curls. The disadvantage, excuse me, the advantage is exothermic reaction causes the solution to get hot so we don't have to put our client under the dryer. The disadvantage, again, is the unpleasant ammonia odor, and it may damage delicate hair. Our next perm type is true acid waves. It has a pH of 4.5 to 7.0. Its active ingredient is glycerol monothioglycolate. It's endothermic, so now we know our client must sit under the dryer. It's recommended for extremely porous or very damaged hair. The results are going to be soft, weak curls. It has a low pH, so it doesn't swell the cuticle scales very much. It requires heat from the hair dryer and still will not produce firm, strong curls. Next is our acid balanced waves. It has a pH of 7.8 to 8.2. The active ingredient is glycerol monothioglycolate. Processes at room temperature. It's recommended for porous or damaged hair. We can expect soft curls. There's minimal swelling and it processes at room temperature so there's no dryer needed. The disadvantage to it is repeated exposure causes allergic sensitivity in clients and stylists. So we certainly want to protect ourselves and our client. Ammonia free waves has a pH of 7.0 to 9.6. Monoethylamine or amino methylpropanol are the active ingredients. Processes at room temperature is recommended for porous to normal hair. We can expect medium to fine curls. There's no unpleasant ammonia odor to it. But the disadvantage is the overall strength varies with different manufacturers. So we don't know if we're using a 7 or we're using a 9.6. The next type of perm is the thio-free wave. Mercatamine or cystamine with a pH of 7.0 to 9.6. Processes at room temperature. Recommended for porous to normal hair. The results will be medium to fine curls. It could be gentler, but it's according to the formula. That's the disadvantages. The overall strength varies so much with different manufacturers. Now, our last type of perm is low pH waves with a pH of 6.5 to 7.0. Active ingredient, ammonium sulfide or ammonium bisulfite. It's endothermic. What does endothermic mean? We've got to put them under the dryer. It's recommended for normal, fine, or damaged hair. We can expect weak body or weak curl or body wave. There's minimal swelling, so it doesn't damage the cuticle scales much. It requires heat from a hair dryer, and it produces weak curls, which turns a lot of us off with it. Now, the next thing we've got to talk about as we begin processing, how far do we go with this? 506? Okay. Overprocessed hair is when we choose a solution that was too strong for that type of hair, or we leave a solution on the hair too long, which overprocessed. We just got through saying that it may take place in the first five to ten minutes. That's when most of the work is going on. We'll often have a client to call us and say, my perm did not take. But the symptoms are the same if we over-processed it or under-processed it. Either one, when it's dry, it's going to have no body if it's under-processed or over-processed. So we've got to have them come in we don't tell them right off, well, I'll do it over for you. If we under-processed it, we do do it over for them, free of charge, because that's our mistake. We should have been watching it. But we can't tell them right off that that's it when they say, my hair's still not holding any curl, because that's indicative of over-processed or under-processed. 
we set up a time with them when they can come in and explain to them that we would like to be able to wet their hair so we can tell. If it is over-processed and we wet it, it's going to curl back up in a bunch of kinky curls. may have a place or two on the ends that were really porous that turned straight or whatever. But if it was under-processed when we wet it, there's, it's going to be limp just like it was when we began. You understand what I'm saying? So we want to be careful about over-processing. Um, if you find your client's hair has been overprocessed, it probably happened within the first five to ten minutes. That's why we don't want to mess around and leave it on so long. If the hair is not sufficiently processed after ten minutes, it may require that we reapply some solution so we can get in there and go to work. Thorough saturation of the hair is essential to proper processing in all permanent ways, but most especially on resistant hair. And if we've done a thorough hair analysis, we know whether we're working with porous or resistant hair, don't we? Regardless of the strength or pH of the solution, resistant hair may not become completely saturated with just one application of waving lotion. So oftentimes with resistant hair, we apply it, wait five or ten minutes. If we haven't got the curl we want, we apply it again. A thorough saturation with stronger solution will break more disulfide bonds and process the hair more, but processing the hair more does not necessarily translate into more curl. A properly processed permanent wave should break and rebuild approximately 50% of the hair's disulfide bonds. If we break too many disulfide bonds, the hair may not have enough strength left to hold the desired curl, meaning we've damaged the hair a lot. Weak hair equals a weak curl. Contrary to what many believed, overprocessed hair does not necessarily mean hair that is over curly. If we break too many disulfide bonds, the hair will be too weak. Overprocessed hair usually has a weak curl or may even be completely straight. Since the hair at the scalp is usually stronger than the hair at the ends, overprocessed hair is usually curlier at the scalp. If the hair is overprocessed, processing it more will make it straighter. So when she tells us her curl didn't take, we got to look. Did we overprocess or underprocess? Now, if it's underprocessed and we've wet it and we see it's not there, we can perm her again, but we got to remember we got to do another hair analysis, haven't we? Because we're working with different hair now. This is not the hair we started out with because we have attacked it with permanent waving solution. So we're going to have to back off and choose a lot weaker formula perm to put on there this time. We're fixing to discuss something else with permanent waving, and that is neutralization. And I'm going to ask a key question here, and I haven't said this, so if you don't know the answer, that's fine. But where are the most errors made in permanent waving? What causes the most failures in permanent waving? Not rinsing it out good? Not drying it off good? Not what? Poor neutralization. We're going to talk about neutralizers here, and I'm going to go ahead and tell you right up front, they're good chemicals. If you let the lotion get on the skin and they said it's tingling or burning, if you will wet your towel and blot it off and put a little neutralizer there, it will solve that. So it's good stuff. So it's good, why should we worry about using it all over the place? You know, we forget that just because it's the good doesn't mean it's not the important too. So some of the steps we make that causes the failure in our permanent wave is we've broken all these bonds and we fail to get neutralizer on it to reform some of them. So what have we got with our hair? Limp, curl doesn't hold, cuticle scale standing wide open. We got all of those problems. Several steps in our neutralization process can cause us to fail. One of them is not rinsing the solution out thoroughly. That starts the ball rolling. It tells us here that neutralizers deactivates or neutralizer, neutralizes any waving solution that remains in the hair. But it's not meant to fight a lot of permanent waving solution. So you rinse. Most manufacturers recommend that you rinse five minutes. Most of us are not good at knowing when five minutes goes by. If we're doing something we don't like when a 90 seconds is up, we think five minutes is gone. If we're doing something we like, 30 minutes is up, we think five minutes went by. Set your timer. It's vitally important to rinse at the five minutes. Rinse till the timer goes off no matter how little fun you're having. 
When you get through rinsing, towel will blot each rod. Get the excess water off. If going through it one time, towel blotting each rod saturates your towel, get another towel. If we leave too much water in there, it dilutes our neutralizer so it can't work to its optimum. Then make sure you saturate every rod with neutralizer. Now the hair has been wet for a while, we shampooed it. Then we kept it wet while we rolled it. Then we put wave solution on it. Now we've rinsed it. So you're probably not going to use your whole bottle of neutralizer. If you have some left, set it on your back bar and leave it there until the neutralizer has been on the hair long enough. When you take the rods out, pick up that neutralizer bottle and squirt the rest of it in the hair and work it in. Will it make some whole curl that you may not have saturated? No, it won't. But will it close the cuticle scales? Yes. Will it reform the bonds back in the shape they're in now? Yes. And it's better for it to be that even if you got a little straight in place than it is to not neutralize it at all. So the second part of a neutralizer's process is it rebuilds the disulfide bonds that were broke by the waving lotion. The neutralizers used in permanent waves are oxidizers. The term neutralizer is not very accurate because the chemical reaction involved is actually oxidation. The most common neutralizer is hydrogen peroxide. The concentrations may vary between 5 volume and 10 volume. All right. Post-perm hair care. There used to be all types of tales that we'd tell our clients, and we got that from our manufacturers. Don't shampoo your hair for 48 to 72 hours. The perm has not set in yet, and it's got to become familiar with its new shape. You know. <laughs> Of course, that, that's what we were told. And I come from the old school, and I learned in the old school. You know what? I still don't shampoo mine, although sometimes I, every time I sniff, I can smell it after I get the perm. Um, that's not necessarily true. Look on the box. Some of them, it's not going to hurt a thing if when you rinse the neutralizer out. If you shampoo it right then, if they don't like the smell of it, not going to be a problem to you. Not going to be a problem to her. But do follow your manufacturer's directions. Then we want to talk about some safety precautions for permanent waving. We've got safety everywhere, especially with us working with sharp implements and chemicals. Always protect your client's clothing. Have the client change into a gown if you do that in your salon. Make sure you use a waterproof shampoo cape. Double drape with towels to absorb accidental spills. Not only do you not want that solution on their skin, you don't want that solution on her $75 blouse. Why? It may ruin it. Do not give a permanent wave to any client who has an experienced an allergic reaction to a previous perm. Do not save any opened, unused waving lotion or neutralizer. These lotions change in strength and effectiveness. Do not dilute or add anything to the waving lotion or neutralizer unless that manufacturer says to do so. Keep waving lotion out of the client's eyes and away from the client's skin. In case of accidental exposure, rinse thoroughly with cool water. Always follow the manufacturer's directions. If it says that 10 minutes is the time limit, then you want to get it off pretty quick after that. Wear gloves when applying solutions. Immediately replace cotton or towels that have become wet with solution. Examine the scalp before the perm service. Do not proceed if there are any skin abrasions or any sign of scalp disease. What's going to happen if we put this perm solution on somebody that's got scalp abrasions? It's going to irritate it. It's going to what? It's going to burn it. It's going to let that solution enter into our skin, our system, remember our skin is our protective barrier. Do not attempt to perm hair that has previously been treated with hydroxide relaxers. Do not perm hair that is excessively damaged or shows signs of breakage. Always perform a test for metallic salts if there is a possibility that metallic hair color was used. Always apply protective barrier cream around the client's hairline and ears before applying the permanent waving solution. 
What are metallic salts, you might ask? And when we go into hair coloring, you'll study them more into depth. But there is some hair colors out there, if they're not used professionally, that are sold on the market. And when you put them on hair, you have to put them on and put them on, and they build up until they get the color going for men only is usually a, a, an example, used as an example of that. Leaves a coating on the hair. And you can always tell because it will be orange, a strange color orange. Green, a strange color green. Purple, a strange color purple. And I don't mean that like purple like these boxes were, but you can, as they move their head, you'll see that. The hair will never shine. It's going to look brittle, and it will feel brittle. If you have a client come to you like that, all you've got to do is cut out a few strands of the hair, and in a glass or plastic bowl, and this is because hydrogen peroxide reacts with metal. That's why you never use a metal spoon to stir it or anything. Mix one ounce of 20 volume peroxide with 20 drops of 28% ammonia. Get at least 20 strands of the hair. Put it in the solution for 30 minutes because you don't want to mess around and put a permanent wave on hair that has metallic salts present. If metallic salts are not present, the hair will lighten slightly, and you can go on with the service. The reason it lightens slightly is you've got peroxide there that lifts two levels. If metallic salts are present, the hair will lighten rapidly. The solution may get hot, may give off an unpleasant odor, indicating that you should not proceed with the service. And according to what type of metallic salts are in there, it may begin to boil and wouldn't that be something if you'd put the perm solution on there and it all went to boiling like you had it on the stove? Yeah. And I'm not trying to scare you. You've got ways to protect yourself so you don't go there. And that's what we're talking about. All right, questions? All right.